Perfect. Got it. Okay. So every time I see some job posted on LinkedIn, it's like two hours and I already see like 900 people have applied. Um, and I think it keeps getting like bigger and bigger in Dubai. Like recently I keep seeing more. So I don't know what people can do to stand out from these yeah. bunch of apps. Yeah, good question. So first of all, a couple of things. So some so LinkedIn, it's got a little bit of a trick to it. So when you see number of applications, it doesn't mean that that's the number of people that have actually applied for the job. It means that that's the number of people that have actually clicked on that job. <clears throat> so it shouldn't be a determining factor for you not to apply or not. So just because you've seen 1,000 applications, it doesn't mean that all of those 1,000 people have actually submitted their CV. And it also doesn't mean that all of those 1,000 people are actually relevant to the job. You get quite often a lot of times, for example, say it's a, a marketing role. And all of a sudden you've got engineers, you've got people who are just dreaming that they want to have that marketing role and they're not even got any marketing experience. So there's actually less number of people have applied for that job. And if you really are a strong fit, then you should certainly not let that be a determining factor to, to your application. So that's the first point. Second, and I'll touch on three. Second of all, there is um, an ATS, an applicant tracking software system that will review your LinkedIn profile if it's an easy apply, which is why it's really important to be having a look at your overall job spec. So your, your title, the keywords that are relevant. So you can use chat GTP, you can use the AI tools to find out what keywords are relevant for my job title and ensure that your LinkedIn profile has got those keywords in it. And third, um, it's really important as well that you're applying in PDF format on easy apply because <clears throat> what happens is when you apply for the position and you send your resume in LinkedIn in Word, you upload it to the platform, the recruiter then has to download the Word document, save it to the computer and open it. They cannot visually see this CV. If you apply in PDF, then the program will automatically pull out that PDF document onto the platform so the recruiter can visualize it on the platform and not have to download anything. So you can stand out a lot more if you've got a PDF document. Okay, 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 perfect. Um, about the GPT, I think it's really useful and I think it also works for your CV or would it be different? Yeah, it does. Yeah. You, so if you prompt it correctly, so for example, um, make sure that you've got relevant keywords for a marketing manager or for a sales director, whatever job title that you go for, you need to make sure that you're prompting the GTP correctly so that then it gives the right output. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, what about when you went through this first filter of like sending your CV and stuff and then the someone calls you? Like, is there something that you can do to stand out or? Uh, what do you mean when they call you? Yeah, normally they will call you to do like a brief, uh, not even an interview. Screening. Ask you people. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I think it's important, first of all, that you have a tracker because all of a sudden, if you get a phone call and they say, um, you know, we'd like to interview for this job and you've applied for so many jobs, you can't even remember which, which one it is. You want to make sure, first of all, what is the job description that you're being called about, what job title it is. And then obviously when you're explaining a brief introduction about yourself, that you're introducing yourself relevant to that job description. So for example, if it is um, again, I'll go back to marketing. If there's an aspect for digital marketing, when you introduce yourself, you want to talk about the fact that you're really strong with digital marketing and those relevant skill sets. Whereas if you're being interviewed about a sales role, you want to talk about the sales skills in your introduction. So it's you're, right. you're introducing yourself specific to the job that you applied to. Yeah, makes sense. Makes total sense. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, and then... This okay, this applies for an interview and also whenever they call you, right? We'll yeah, there. okay. Um, what are then just in general, not to stand out, but like some good practices people can do to find a job? Yeah, 
Good question. So in Dubai, obviously there's there's a lot of job seekers and I totally get that. Um, but to be able to stand out, you need to make sure that you're maximizing LinkedIn. So it's the number one platform in the UAE. However, don't forget that it's not the only one. So you definitely need to have a strong presence on there. You need to find out who are the hiring managers within your target companies, who are the HR or talent acquisition representatives. And of course, what target companies are you really trying to get your foot in the door? So what we would recommend is you have a list of, say, a top 20 companies and say, right, this is who I'm really wanting to get an interview with. And what sort of stakeholder management or stakeholder mapping can you do to find out what people or who, who do I need to connect with in those target companies? Because not always the job adverts are advertised. So you can still pitch yourself to say that you're interested in joining Amazon even if there's no role actually advertised or opened. And, and finally, don't limit yourself. So yes, LinkedIn is great, but go have a look. Is there company websites that have got their own job portals on their own website? Because sometimes they're advertising not on LinkedIn. So you can go to the company portal or the career page and find out, can you register yourself there? Okay. Okay, perfect. What just in terms of when you are contacting a hiring manager, what are some do's and don'ts whenever yeah. you're like contacting them? Yeah, cool. So I guess from my experience, and obviously I'm recruiting myself, so I, I've got hand, first-hand experience as a recruiter, as well as someone who is writing their resumes and helping job searching strategists. The number one thing I don't want you guys to do is <clears throat> write an email that's like this long that I have to scroll through to, to try and, you know, find out what you're good at. Just keep it yeah. short, like you know, maybe four or five lines, your name, what you're experiencing or your your university degree, if that's something that's new or relevant, what skill sets can you bring to the table? You don't need to hear the whole life story, you know, all across your career. Um, so keeping the email short and to the point, um, and what job are you actually interested in? Because sometimes companies are advertising maybe five different jobs. And if you say, Hi, Trisha, I'm wanting to know what, what job is relevant for my skill set. I don't know you. So make sure that you let me know what job are you specifically targeting so that I can cross check you versus the job description. And probably finally, attach the CV or your LinkedIn profile in the email. Don't just say, you know, your introduction. I need somewhere to be able to, to review your profile itself. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Um... What are some things that are relevant when you're applying to a job in Dubai? And I'll give you an example. I, In my impression, in my experience, in Colombia, which is where I've applied to jobs before, there, it is way more relevant, your education, your university, than, for example, your job experience or maybe some project you do, you know, outside of your work. I don't know if in Dubai it's the same, but my impression is that it was more important in my applications, the things that I did, you know, like my personal projects, my hobbies, or the things that helped me be better at my job rather than my education and my title. So yeah. I don't know if that's right. There are some other aspects that are relevant. Yeah. So um, I guess these days, a lot of employers are looking at your unique selling proposition. So what can you bring to the table that will be able to enhance the business? So certainly degrees are important. I'm not denying that. And most job descriptions mandate a degree. However, it's more important to highlight your achievements. So what yeah. impacts have you had to the business, whether that is in the form of budget enhancements, KPI advancements, sales figures that you have you know, supported the growth, um, and then um, listing those achievements in bullet point form Unless that you've completed maybe like a PMP or, or a master's or PhD relatively fresh, like the last, you know, maybe two, three, maximum five years, you can bring that to the top of the document. But otherwise, certainly your value in terms of quantified metrics is more important than the degree that you completed 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um. I think this would be the last question. It is about the jobs that are in demand in Dubai lately. What 
is the thing you see the most the position yeah Yeah, good question so I probably I'll touch on two aspects so at the moment the real estate industry is through the roof it's probably at the same levels that it was back in from 2014 when there was a bit of a boom there so anything to do with real estate such as sales digital marketing real estate agents um, these sort of roles within that sector are in high demand. A lot of locals are starting their own business. They're trying to get a foot in the door and capitalizing on the real estate boom. So if you speak two or three languages and I've got real estate experience, then it is a really added value to, um, to get a role quickly. And you'll most likely get a job instantly if you've got that experience. Um, second of all, fintech. So that's quite a big hub. At the, Dubai is a hub for the fintech and innovation um, from the finance side of things as well. So that's in demand. A lot of private equity firms are going quite well. So they're looking again for agents, um, sales and these sorts of um, um, roles that grow the business in that aspect. And it's probably as a result of migrants company coming. So a lot of um, Russians and Ukraine have tried to sort of escape that difficult situation that they're in. And there's an opportunity in Dubai being in a neutral territory. Same with France um, and a lot of Northern European countries. So there's a lot more accessible money and therefore businesses are trying to put on roles that will grow their business. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, I do get this question a lot about like technology. So maybe I get like website developers, um, software engineers, like how's that? What's that? Yep. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, good question. Not so much like your scrum or agile principles waterfall, but definitely, and I probably should have touched on that, but definitely um, like JavaScript programming, these sorts of um, um, skill sets are in demand, I guess, because there's a lot of AI around. So people are now trying to build up their own websites, their own platforms um, to accommodate with, um, you know, being forward thinking. So definitely there's a lot and um, more so at the middle level management rather than at the director level roles. But but definitely, you know, if you're looking for a salary of around probably between 10 and 20 or 12 and 25,000 dirham, then there's a lot of roles in that aspect. Anything up in your senior level, you're probably going to be having to go for like a CTO or a CIO role, um, which covers a lot more aspects than just the developing side. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay. I do have one last question. Most of the people that is watching, um, they have a career here in Colombia or in their own country and, uh, they want to go to Dubai and find a job in their career. What would you suggest is the best point to start? Because probably they're not going to be able to go to the same level they were. Um, so what would be like a smart way to start? Yeah. Cool. Okay. So there's a couple of different ways, but maybe I'll, I'll advise on one and we can certainly jump on another call and discuss these more in detail, but it depends. So I'm conscious to advise, but some people just want to get into the Dubai market. So whether that you take an administration role or a PAEA role or sales role, just to get Dubai experience, once you've got that one or two years maximum experience, then you can reapply back into the industry that you were you know, um, initially in. And another way is that you could accept a role that is a little bit lower, you know, sort of one or two levels lower to where you are now, and then build your career level back up. Um, the, the the issue is most employers want someone with Dubai experience. So it's really hard to get a job when you don't have Dubai experience. That's why a lot of people accept any job just to get the Dubai um exposure and then apply elsewhere once you've got that so you know there's a couple of different ways that you could even negotiate for example you could just accept a role but have it as a dual position so try to change your job title so that you've got it as a matching um you know as your previous experience um but i would be certainly looking at other roles that are similar just to get your foot in the door and maybe accept a little bit less of a salary just to get that you know, UAE experience and then move on. Um, and, and don't forget as well, create your achievements along the way. So from day one, start writing down what value did you bring to the company so that when you start applying, you already know the value that you're bringing to the Dubai market. Right, right. Okay. Um, What about, 
because we go to cities a lot. People um, go to Dubai, they want to learn English. And while they're learning, they're working on hospitality. And then they, they're good with their English and then they want to jump to their you know, profession. What would be a good idea? Like, is there any advantage from working in hospitality? Yeah, it is. I mean, at the end of the day, it may be harder to get back into where you originally were, but if your English is not up to the standard that it needs to be for a workplace, it can be really difficult to get a job in Dubai because certainly English is vital to be having at a professional level. It's probably the most dominant language other than Arabic that's used anyway. And in fact, most cases, English is used across the board so um you know if it, it means it enhances your professionalism and and capabilities in english then i would be accepting it so that you can then transition without a problem into your desired workplace and by the way my last point is that um you know try not to stay in the role for more than maybe 18 months because it will make it so much difficult to go from your career hospitality and then back to your original career okay Okay, got it. Is there any way they can leverage this experience in their, um, like when they go to their career? I don't know, just, I don't know, just saying, oh, I talk to people from a lot of countries, I should have experience in that or something. Yeah, just try and take on extended tasks. So for example, you know, maybe you're going from IT um, and then to get a job in hospitality, just to get a foot in the door in, in Dubai market, ask the manager, is there any type of extended IT tasks that I can do, whether it is free or part of your, um, your daily operations, so that you're not losing the skill sets. And on your CV, you can still put, um, you know, maybe hospitality manager or front office manager slash IT support. So when you're applying to the next role in the future, you've still got your IT background back home and then you've got the experience of the IT in the in the new role that you've accepted. So it's right. you get my point. This transition is yeah, yeah a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. Really good idea. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think about that. Um I keep coming up with questions, sorry, because I remember <laughs> what people ask. Um, and I don't know if this is, and I'll cut this from the video, but I don't know if this is a topic that's sensitive, just let me know. But we've heard a lot of things about fines. So there are some employers that, you know, someone wants to quit and, uh, quit and they say, like, just you have to pay me. It's on the contract. And uh, <laughs> I never know what to say. I don't know if that's legal or yeah. not and what I'm doing. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming this might have been a little while ago. I don't know the exact time frame, but there's been new new UAE labor laws that have been introduced. So if you break your contract, so now there's a fixed term contract. So it's a three year fixed contract that you've got and there's a probation period of six months. So if you break that, you may need to pay. And again, it would be based off contract per contract. Um, then then you may need to pay the remaining if you had finished for example, within, like there's, say, one year left of your contract, you may need to be paying that out. Wow. So okay. it's always important. Again, it, it's not every company like that. It's not like a blanket rule. You need to check within the fine print of, of what your contract actually stipulates. Okay. So in I, for example, had a contract and I never saw that fine. Yeah. Um, but I, then if you stop it, then it is legal. Yeah, yeah. I, I personally, pay, I had to pay 35,000 dirham for exiting my last contract. I've experienced oh. it myself personally. So, yep, you need to check. It's, it's not every company, but some organizations may may demand that because it's a, wow. it's a recruitment cost for the company to have to overcome. Yeah, and they can decide the cost, right? Yeah, so the contract. So if you've got one year left out of your three-year contract, they may say you have to pay us that one year out. Wow, okay. Yep, so just yeah. cross-check, okay? Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, I think I don't have any more questions. Yeah. That last one was really important. Thank you. Uh, no worries, no worries. Um, okay, so thank you, Trisha. No I hope we you here again and then if anyone has questions just leave them down below and trisha will come back and answer all of them you can follow her on linkedin i will leave the username down here and on youtube i'll leave it down here yeah. as well yes um 
And also Trisha, we do have this link some time ago in case you haven't seen it, but Trisha helps you with your CV. Um, with You have a full package, right? Like sure. to work in Dubai. Yep. Yep. So I can support you with your CV, your LinkedIn profile, cover letters, and some emails. So if you want some support in how to email a recruiter, then I can put that all together for you. Okay, perfect. So I'll leave the link down below so you guys can check that out. And thank you, Trisha. You are very welcome. And here's my little munchkin. That's okay, no miss. Oh. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you so much, guys. Well, <laughs>